What's up, guys? It's Mr. Jamvad. One, I haven't used that intro in years. Secondly, I haven't uploaded in years. So uh, we're going to be doing something very different. So many of you may know, may not. I've had and had been training people privately doing something called a boot camp where we take people from wherever they are to wherever they want to be in a few short weeks. And so this has been a very successful project that's been going on for a little over four years, actually, I think four years now. And um, yeah, so this time we're going to be recording the process with uh, today's client. Today's client happens to be uh, one of my best friends on earth. And uh, yeah, he decided that he wanted to take a swing back uh, into the Pokemon world. So yeah, uh, my brother, uh, I was actually thinking, like, should I just say your normal name? But yeah, I don't think you yeah. have an alias. Uh, go with it. Go with all right, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Julian, you know, real quickly, could you give up the people um, like a real brief synopsis of how you got into Mons the first time uh, we got into the process of this and why you're doing another one? Yes. So I've always loved Mons, best game on the planet, very addictive. I, like a lot of people, have that kind of ADHD personality where I'll dive into one thing, become obsessed with it, and want to be the best. And especially back then, before I got a lot of the good Mr. Jambad psych training, it was a lot of, I wanted to get the feeling of being successful in the game and make, feeling good about myself because of that. So that's kind of how I tackled all games. So I, I had to be the best. And so when I found out there was somebody who was, a, and I'm, I'm saying this, you know me, you know I don't just say stuff. When they I found out, that, there was, yeah. <laughs> they don't know that, but you know that. Right, right. But, but when I found out that like the best coach in the game existed, I was like, oh, okay, I have to have the best coach in the game. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to be the best. So there's that. And also, I kind of just wanted to learn how to teach as well. So I was like, maybe I could learn a thing or two. Not Pokemon, but just generally. I was like, maybe I could learn a thing or two from this guy. And uh, that's where our relationship really started, actually, was I bought Mons Coaching, and I learned a lot. And it actually snowballed. I never really think about it now, mm -hmm. but it snowballed into a lot of ridiculously great quality of life increases across a lot of different categories. And it really did start with that, so that's interesting. But yeah, initially I wanted to be good at Mons. I know I, I found the, the goaded coach. And uh, now that's where I am again. I genuinely want to be good at Mons again. I support my guy. I'm excited that you want to make content about it. And I'm ready to go. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, it did snowball into that. But uh, me and him agreed we would uh, stay on track. So for you curious beavers, I'm sorry. I can't do anything for you. But, um, yeah, that was two years ago. Um, almost to the day. Probably two years in a month. Wow. But, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, 2021 late december i think uh so yeah and, and i don't we don't need to go into all the benefits that uh come from me knowing him and hopefully vice versa so first step can you see my screen still yes i'm looking at the uh, website all right so just a refresher and for those who don't know how this process works so just as a refresher uh if you recall, we're going to be tracking your progress, right, over the time span. Um, so they change. That was, the, that was, I just want to say, if I can, mm -hmm. that was one of my favorite parts was uh, filling in that damn uh, daily up and down sheet. Loved yeah. that. That was really fun. And it's funny. I pulled back up your old profile. Oh, it said, exists. That's crazy. Yeah, I remember that 24th. one time you were huh? teaching me about game planning, and I dropped all the way down to 1200s for as i tried to implement it well it's actually all still stacked here cool was, uh from december 24th that's when you started which is kind of funny right before christmas and then um yeah to february 4th so you went for your call we took you from just coming back into the game to what well, you got to top 100 at the time right yeah it was yeah. it's higher than that i can't remember exactly it where was. i think mm -hmm. but but um I, I stopped the, the Gengar ban, so I don't remember exactly what rank I was then. 
Right, right. And you just kind of, so if you had continued, we already discussed this, you'd have eventually hit number yeah. one. Because that's what happens when you realize the rules of the game. You apply them repeatedly. It's inevitable. Um, and so that's and what we're going to be going over. Huh? Yeah, this time, I, I definitely want to hit number one this time, so there's no, uh, so the, to put the haters to rest, the haters <laughs> that don't exist, there may not be any out there, but if there are, just know I'm going to take your soul. Bet. Goggin style. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, perfect. So can you see the whiteboard now? Yeah. All right. We're going to get a bit more into the nitty gritty. Just to see what you remember, uh, the kind of overarching things that that I usually go over is um, one. I won't go over this one because it's obvious for everybody watching, I'm sure. And you. So knowing what a metagame means, what a metagame is. Um, do you know, you remember what the three actions are? Oh, man. Is this like the three pillars of, of knowledge? No, no, no. That's different. The three actions. Yep. When I say them, you'll remember them. But do you know them off the top of your head? No, no. So it's attacking, defending, and, and switching, right? Oh, yeah. If, mm. if I, yeah, if I knew, I didn't know them by name, but yeah. Right. It's fine. But I know you'll know, as long as you know what they are, and you can mm -hmm. have a mental image and an example of them, then you're good. Yeah. Um, and so there are a few updates as well uh, that cool. everybody will appreciate. And this will be in the new book, but, uh, you know, we're going to go over them right here. So... You know what the three actions are now prior there were three pillars um now there are there are two distinct changes that that we'll have to update um you remember what value is yeah it's like you know you want to get the value you want to take their opponent's value before the opponent takes your value right. so it could be pp it could be positioning it could be HP on an important mon, this part of the game plan. It could be an item, like knockoff. It you know, takes value. Right. And so <clears throat> something over time I had to distinguish was that value, because, you know, I sat back and I really thought, well, what is value exactly? Right. And so value is something objective. Value now is a Pokemon's HP. Right. It's always been the case. But it's something measurable, right? So HP, PP, right? Health, this H here is going to mean health. This means their status, right? So if you poison them, paralyze them, somebody's paralyzed, uh, or Pokemon rather, you're not taking health per se, but they did lose value because their speed is halved and they can potentially um, not move um, on any given turn. So that H means health. Um, time, right? So we can be having a, a battle and you're running out of time, right? Mm -hmm. While I'm not, right? I'm, I am, but you're running out of time at a far, far higher rate than I. Uh, so this is value. And so with every given turn, I'm trying to reduce one of these for you or as many of these as I can, right? And so the point of that, and this is where it's, it's, it's the distinction came, is to make progress. The only way progress is made and progress is defined as uh, movement towards the objective or the, the, the win condition, right? Um, so at any point, if there are any terms that are kind of like, oh, I kind of remember that, I kind of don't, then just let me know. But the, the objective of a battle is to make progress and progress is made by taking this stuff from the mm -hmm. opponent at a faster rate then they take it from you. Mm. Right. And so that's the, the key objective. So what we're really measuring for every turn is how much progress you're making and how much mm. progress you're making is based on how much value is this. A, this is a value of, let's say, value of you minus the value of the opponent. Like, mm. oh, that's an O right there. And so if, if you're taking, you know, let's use numbers to value and the opponent's taking 10, you're in the deficit, right? negative eight. So you're making negative progress and negative progress is progress for the opponent. Right. Right. So hopefully I didn't lose too many people with that. It basically just means that you're moving closer to the objective. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so that's that's the value and progress. Any questions, insights, um, observations? Negative eight progress. We call that scouting, right? No, negative eight means that you're losing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it means you're getting clapped. Like, yeah. Uh, no, scouting is 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 a. You think of it more like you're not losing much. You're not gaining much. Yeah. Uh, cool. So you want to scout when you're not giving them much value. Yeah, you're so not you. you, when, you right. So you've, that that would look like. Um, I'm trying to give a, a relevant example that can apply in all conditions. So that would look like you're repositioning what's on the field. So let's say you have a, let's say you have a Ferrothorn and the opponent has a Gyarados mm -hmm. on the field. You know, this person is known for wonky stuff, right? That mm -hmm. Gyarados, Gyarados learns Fire Blast, I'm pretty sure. Which is strange, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. hold on, let me make sure that's accurate. I'm pretty sure it learns Fire Blast. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've, learned, I've used Fire Blast Gyarados, even though if it didn't, you know, the example still stands. Yeah, it does right. like Fire Blast. So, oh. so let's say I'm like, okay, well, I know this person likes to use gimmicky wonky stuff. I have a habit of using Ferrothorn. And so I have a Ferrothorn that can deal with the Gyarados, Gyarados. But I also have, let's say, I'm trying to think of another Pokemon that would um, also do the job. Um, let's say I have a Rotom Wash. So I have a Ferrothorn and I have a Rotom Wash on the team. Scouting would be me switching from Ferrothorn to Rotom Wash to see if he has Fire Blast. Okay. Yeah. Because, because Rotom Wash does well versus Gyarados anyway, even if it doesn't have Fire Blast. So right. I'm swapping out solutions. Ferrothorn is a solution to Gyarados and Rotom is a solution to Gyarados. But I'm swapping out solutions to see if the opponent has any surprise tricks that can take value from me. Dope. So that's scouting. But if you're switching from Ferrothorn to uh, uh, an Alakazam or something, <laughs> you know, yep. whether if he dragon dances, you're just you're just fucked. There right. is no scouting there. Um, so you want to make sure it's a position where you're not losing a lot of value. Cool. Or progress. You know, making cool. negative progress. That makes sense. Yes, it does. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, so the next thing is uh, going back to the three powers. I call them the powers now. And cool. I'll go over what now there are only two of them. And um, but it, but they're still very similar. You see. So one hasn't changed. In fact, both hasn't changed. But now they've just been refined further. So in Pokemon, you need to possess two key powers. Right? If you don't have power in Pokemon, then you're going to succumb to somebody who's more powerful. So you don't want to, You don't want that. Not in a competitive game. Right. So you want to make yourself as powerful as possible. Unfortunately, these things are within our control as players. And so mm -hmm. knowledge, remember knowledge from the three pillars prior, mm -hmm. was um, all the informational parts of Pokemon. So mm -hmm. that's every metagame set, what the moves do, what Sucker Punch does, mm -hmm. all of that, right? Yeah. Um, a good example of that is a, a buddy of mine. I remember I mentioned it to you. You might be watching this. Uh, but I have him going through the new book. And he's literally like green, green, green. To the point mm -hmm. where he didn't even know how to import a team and like that green. Right? Mm -hmm. And so he's going through the process uh, using the book and almost no external training. Like, so I don't actually train him or anything because I want to see mm -hmm. how effective the book would be to take somebody from ground zero to where they need to be mm -hmm. and um so he's going through that process and so currently his knowledge is extremely low like he's learning all the basics and then on top of the basics it stacks to more relevant things like metagame said oh okay i'm noticing these tendencies when i see a um uh, toxapex it tends to have these moves and, and so he's building on what's called his knowledge bank but that power is always being built upon because the metagame is always changing. So yesterday, 
Valiants may have run that. Next week, they're running this, right? Yeah. And if you're stuck in what Valiant was running last week, you're at a disadvantage. Does that make sense? Yes. And skill, and this is where things change a bit. Skill, Pokemon, I had to think now, okay, well, what a skill has to achieve an outcome, right? It has to produce a, re, produce a result. So what, what is that? What result is it producing? And I'll, I'll more importantly, what action is being taken, right? What exactly is skill in Pokemon? And so we first have to figure out, well, what, what is Pokemon, right? And Pokemon more or less, I'm going to kind of skip the questioning part. And you know what I mean by that? Uh, Pokemon is a game where you're problem solving. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put PS. So that's it fundamentally. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I'm solving problems, right. And problems look like, okay, me and you are playing. Mm -hmm. I lead with my Charizard and you lead with your Scizor, right? Problem. Who has the problem? I have the problem. <laughs> exactly. I have no problems here. Unless Scizor had a priority rock move or something, but in, in just from a mm -hmm. fire, steel, bug standpoint, just typing, you have a problem. And right. so Pokemon is, the, is, is about solving that problem and giving me a problem back. Right. Because if I fire move and you stay in and you die, you mm -hmm. lost value and I made progress. You mm -hmm. did not. Thanks. Right. So the question is always, okay, who has the problem? If it's me, how do I solve it? And so mm -hmm. ideally you have a solution on your team to something like a fire Pokemon that may look like a Toxapex that you go into or a Blissey or, you know, assuming I'm a special Charizard. So you may go to a Toxapex on me. You eat up the fire blast, take next to nothing. Now who has the problem? Not you. Bingo. And that's always happening back and forth all the time until somebody takes the other person's value completely. Right. So the skill of you knowing how to solve my problem is all Pokemon is about. Solve your problem. Mm -hmm. Right. You had to have prior experience with a Charizard to know what would happen if Scizor stayed in problem mm -hmm. and you had to know the appropriate solution toxapex mm -hmm. so that's all pokemon is and the question then becomes okay well what what does a player need to know how to do to get better at that like what am i doing like what are we training for what are we improving and the answer is your ability to think critically mm -hmm. just put ct this is the cardinal skill in Pokemon. Critical thinking. Mm -hmm. So that's what skill means. How well can I solve problems? Right? And, and then somebody may be thinking, well, what's the difference between critical thinking and thinking? Or even having thoughts. And while I don't want to go too deep into that, if somebody wanted to know that in the comments, then let me know. But more or less critical thinking, like thinking... Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to use layman terms for this. Um, so critical thinking in particular is usually when the, the answer is not obvious. If the answer is obvious, it's not critical thinking. Let's just mm. put it like that. So, so if it takes a bit of sorting, for example, um, and things that used to be critical thinking fall into critical thinking can go into non-critical thinking. So let's say the first time you were learning two plus two, that would fall under critical thinking, right? Took a lot to, okay, to, you know, we're just learning math and these abstract concepts. Now, two plus two doesn't fall under critical thinking for most people, hopefully, right? It's instinctive. You already know it. It's immediate. Right. And so, and now I'll get into other things, but we won't go over that today. It's beginning uh, thing. But critical thinking is when the problem or the solution to the problem is not obvious and you have to find the best solutions because just mm -hmm. like uh going back to that math example if i give you 
if I say, well, uh, two equals, right? So let's say two, two equals. Th there's an infinite amount of ways you could answer this. Two could equal eight minus six. Two could equals one plus one, right? So there, there are an infinite amount of answers for the same thing. So in Pokemon, sometimes we forget if there's a Charizard on the field, going back to the example versus Scizor, you could go to Toxapex uh, potentially, right? That's a potential solution. You may have a Blissey. That's a potential solution, right? You may have a Heatran. That's a potential solution. And so you may have multiple ways to solve the same problem. And it's figuring out through critical thinking, which one is going to get you the most progress. Mm -hmm. Right. Because maybe if you go to Toxapex and he double switches to something, you lose a Pokemon, whatever he doubles to. Right. It's like, okay, nobody stays in with Scizor here. He's going to go to Toxapex. So he doubles to something that you have no defense against. Right. Let's say it's a Tapu Lele or Alakazam or something like that. And you're right. like, oh, shoot, I don't really have any good psychic resists. You lose a Pokemon there if he doubles. So you might say, right. okay, I'm not going to go to Toxapex. I'm going to go to Blissey instead, just in case he doubles. You know, if you have a Blissey, then you wouldn't even worry about a double, but you get the idea. You may go to right. something else to account for him doing something. And that's a higher level of problem solving, which yeah. is why they're higher levels of players. Mm -hmm. But at the most basic level, guys, what you need to know is that in Pokemon, you need knowledge and in reality, critical thinking. Right. So does that make sense? Yes, it does. Could you give me a recap of what you gather from that? Yeah, critical thinking is the type of thinking that you do to solve problems that are on the frontier of, you know, they're novel. There's a certain novelty to them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's all about getting value. Knowledge is like knowing what base stats Pokemon have, et cetera, et cetera. Skill is about solving problems. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, knowledge is about knowing not only the, the, the technical unchanging stuff about Pokemon, but also the metagame. Yeah. Uh, there's an infinite amount of knowledge updates that can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, great Tusk is always going to have Great Tusk ba Great Tusk's based stats. Right. Um, and I even have to remember, like I just realized yesterday he was a fighting type. I was like, okay, he's ground fighting. Right? That's right, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I still got a lot of knowledge gaps like that. And then uh, skill is uh, problem solving at its core. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's like you think about what can happen. And you're like, all right, if I stay in, I'm going to get fire blasted or flamethrowered, whatever, scissor dies every time. Mm -hmm. And then you can think about, like, maybe I need my scissor, maybe I don't. Uh, what happens when I do this versus what happens when I do this? Bingo. If I have a safe Blissey where um, he can't double into something that gets value, then I can just make the Blissey, Blissey play mm -hmm. on the basic uh, level of analysis. And, uh, and then I'm, I'm solving my problem. And uh, if, if I didn't have the requisite skills to solve that problem, then I'd be in a bad spot. Bingo. And, and getting the requisite skills, as you put it, is what the training is all about, right? And the knowledge right. aspect, you're going to get on your own just from playing, but the skill part isn't as uh, intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there's, there are systems to solving problems in Pokemon in particular. So, yeah. That's, I love uh, the systems. I, 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 think I, I think I remember mm -hmm. most, if not all, the old ones, and they were, I was shocked at how, how much they, under, they uncovered the, the true rules of the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm excited to, to one, see how, uh, how much faster you latch onto those given the first training you have, mm -hmm. and see how fast you're going to um, skyrocket to the points because, you know, uh, you're coming off not playing Mons for more, you know, about two years. And so those who are watching this have no excuse, <laughs> right? They're like, Thanks. Same stuff. And we're recording all this. He was nice enough to record something he's paying for to share with everyone else. Now mm. he's gonna have additional training with a separate coach that won't be recorded. But you know, the core stuff is here. So the last thing uh I wanna go over with you before we hop into some battling 
is cool. uh, the three phases of competitive Pokemon, right? Okay. So Pokemon, Pokemon battle always undergoes three phases. Uh, so no. actually, this is me, but you'll get to it. Mm. Um, the hell does that say team pre? What is that? <laughs> well, you're about to get to it. So yeah. it's somewhat similar. So first there's the the uh, let's, let's call the creation phase right that's where you actually make a team right you don't oh. have to make the team right but you have to have a team you cannot battle with ash right <laughs> it's not gonna go well uh, the player yeah like ash on the field versus a, a, a right period is not going well right that's not gonna look good <laughs> so you you have to uh have a team that's the creation phase or what's it called building that's why i had b and c and all that stuff okay then you have the planning phase which is right what you said team preview so team preview these are true phases they have distinct unique skill sets that make a person successful at each you have the execution mm -hmm. phase which is just battling right cool and so each phase requires slightly different skill masteries so you may have somebody right. who's a really good builder and a horrible battler or a horrible at team preview right or, or very i mean it's really hard to be good at battling if you're not good at team preview. but you know they're distinct um they have overlap but they're distinct and yeah. so team building we're not going to go over here uh, mm -hmm. so for all you team builders we're not going to go over that um it's a separate thing in and of itself what we are going to focus on because when when we do the boot camp you you have to use uh, a tested team anyway and if you're new or you're trying to climb i suggest it's really not a suggestion it's uh it's a um it, it's 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 the rule right <laughs> this isn't this isn't a suggestion if you're newer and you're trying to build a team you're shooting yourself in the foot and i won't mm -hmm. go into why but more or less think about it like if uh uh what would be a good equivalent it's funny how it's defaulting to a girl if, example if you don't know how to build a car and you have to drive and you're like you know i'll just build a car myself right instead of purchasing yeah. a car and then learning how the underworkings work like there's a lot of you won't it's hard for you to tell the real reason is it's hard for you to tell what the issue is if your team is mm -hmm. shit and you're losing it, you're thinking okay I, I have a simple example if somebody is like you, I was like, I'm gonna use six Caterpie, right? And they're applying all the principles from whatever we're discussing. They're they're losing because they have six Caterpie. Now they also might be applying the principles wrong, but you're you're using six Caterpie, right? So the skills will only take you as far as as the proper tool you're using, which is the team. So there's a limit. <laughs> to to how much the skill is gonna gonna make you override the fundamental problem which is a bad team if i'm getting you it sounds like once the team is at a certain level of provenness within the meta then you that variable sort of solved for isolated so then you have a better idea about how well you're applying the principles and you can have a better view of reality when it comes to your skills and your knowledge is that fair enough that's exactly right i just hope that people understood what you said okay exactly. right so that's why I use these concrete examples because my audience, while actually very left-brained, similar, similar to you, um, you know, not everyone is like that. So I try to, you know, the the rules of teaching go, you know, it has to yeah. go. Uh, examples have to be uh, key so they can have a visual. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but exactly what you said. Um, that's just more abstract and more accurate. Uh, so planning is going to be mm -hmm. your team preview, right? So you have to master the process of going through your team preview and then battling, actually executing on the plan, right? And so these three phases, again, we're not going to really dive into creation. We're going to really get into the planning phase, teaching you how to plan effectively. And then that's going to bleed into the execution phase then how to take the things 
the data you gathered from the planning phase and get it into the execution phase. Um, and honestly, if a player can master these two really well, which again is nothing more than problem solving, then they can get to anywhere on the ladder. That's, that's pretty much it for the basics. So going mm. back over, so recap, value, HP, PP, health and time. The right. goal is to, to make progress. It's crazy. This looks, and I look at the progress thing. It looks like this, this weird physics fucking like yeah. class and shit like that. Uh, yeah. Knowledge and skill are the two powers in Pokemon. Mm. Um, skill, the problem, problem solving will be broken down there. There, there's a process to problem solving. So, so mm. technically the quote unquote three pillars awareness and stuff isn't gone it just falls under skill because it's something right. that you have to consciously do right right um and that's where we're going to get into the uh, the next session what the action for that is it's obvious and because you know me you're going to know what it is once we oh, get into you already know dying to say it right yeah but uh this video would be too theory heavy if if i just went all out in that so we're going to go yeah. into the, um, the actual application aspect. Um, oh, and then you have the three phases. So now the next step is for me to see where you are um, in Let's terms of your current level. So uh, I will expose myself. Excellent. Excellent. Please uh, keep the camera off while you do so. Oh, yeah. Now I expose myself like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but yeah, now can you join the IDM room? You remember how to do that? Yeah, yeah, I'm in. I'm in there. I'm in there. What's your all? I'm about to let me let me jump on shutdown. Okay. All right, I'm here. What's uh, iron nostrils? You already know. <laughs> yeah. What was your last thing? It was something nostrils, right? Uh, probably. I probably had it. There you are, academy teams. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So just go ahead and find a battle, and then um. I'll hop in and then. Oh, okay. I might have to uh, unclick. Don't allow spectators. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Anything else I have to do special? Nah. If the opponent has it on, I won't be able to see it. But you can just invite me, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Cool. Finding a battle. And just play as normally as you you would. Okay. I'll okay. Cool. You want to narrate? You could. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna think about the two questions because that's my my old training. Oh, he already started the timer. Shit. Okay, so we got Tyranitar. So what what can he guard against? Let's think. Gajin Fire. What moves do I have? Let's see. If he's a Fizz Def Gliscor, he can guard against Gajin Fire. Skarmory looks like he can. Okay. Iron Valiant. Let me do how that looks. We got booster energy. I think our speed's gonna get boosted. So what is this like a revenge killer? Calm mind. Okay, so it can. I think boom boom. Great tusk. What do I got? Stealth rock. What's this guy got? Okay. Great Tusk. Oh, you know, I don't like if he leads uh, so far. I don't right. like if he leads Raging Bolt. I don't like that very much. Unless so, But I have a Dragapult. Okay, I have a Dragapult. Um, Slow King. Let me look at that. Very tanky. I don't have Chili Reception. That's interesting. All right, my very um, primitive level analysis says I don't like how Raging Bolt, how well it does against my team. Mm -hmm. So if he leads Raging Bolt, I don't want him to get too value straight away. Mm -hmm. Too much value. So I'm, I'm between Slow King and Dragapult. And uh, I want to have some time, so I'm just going to Dragapult real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have something for Tyranitar in uh, Great Tusk. So I could Will-O-Wisp here, um, but I could also... I don't have U-Turn. Okay. I might just switch to Great Tusk. Let's see. Does that invite in something that I don't want to deal with? Not really. Not really. I might just uh, I might just create Tusk and see what's going on. Let me think about another play though. What if I go hard gouging fire and start setting up what could happen? Um, anybody else I might want to go into King Gambit? Not necessarily. 
uh, pursuit. I don't know if that exists in this meta, but no, we're about to get some knowledge. It doesn't. Matter. It, don't exist. it doesn't exist. No. Okay. He might not be like Lumberry or whatever. If I burn something, what if his glyphs? What is he? What is his answer to Dragapult? I mean Tyranitar. I'm looking at it right. Um, so I might just uh, if I go hard gouging fire here, what could happen? He could er no, he's not gonna earthquake, but um, he could, he could. I might just great tusk here because I don't know what the hell's going on. Let's just see what's going on. I would have you turned. He knocked off my. He got value. Okay, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. He made right, some progress there. He did. He made progress. So uh, now. Let me just think, what is he trying to do, too? All right, he's got a Sand Rush Excadrill, probably, right? All right. I don't know, Skarmory, does Defog exist? I don't know. Let's see. I might just Ice Spinner here. Why would I, though? If he goes Hard Skarm, I have Rapid Spin. Body Prime, I'm defensive, right? So if I Ice Spinner, but, oh, I'm just Ice Spinner. Okay. Okay, Rocky Helmet. I didn't even think about that. Oh, and I don't have any recovery on this guy or anything. Okay. You got knocked off. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Do I, okay, now I'm getting kind of sketchy. Do I need a Great Tusk for anything? Sort of, right? Let me think about... Uh, let me just make some moose. I'm overthinking this, I think, because the did, live and everything. Did the Tusk have rocks? Yeah, I did. I, I probably could have got rocks up for sure. Let me just... Uh, Yeah, I'm in. I'm in my head. Let me. Uh... Yeah, just play as normally as you would. You don't have to get it perfect. Oh, I tear poison. Even though, yeah, I'm tripping. Breaking swipe. What is that? It lowers his uh, attack. Is that a, uh, what type is that? Dragon. Oh, okay. Oh, that's kind of cool. No, no wonder this shit is busted. <laughs> what, <Yeah>. the fuck? <laughs> what the hell? What is this shit? Yeah, shit don't make no sense. He might just lose all now. Shit is ridiculous. What the hell? Well, he's pro he probably could have DD'd again. His drill might be faster than you. Oh, Boulder is, but I don't think. Yeah, one more DD would have made the boulder. Uh, but this shit is insane. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Like, you're See, like I didn't... dumb bulky. Like, Jesus. Yeah, what is it? how much did that do? 47? Oh, shit. That's a shame. Yeah, you must be I one save? of them the super defensive sets. <laughs> yeah, it's impish. Whatever. This is the one thing I have because I played this team one time. And I was like, oh, this shit's crazy. It's all defensive and shit. Mm. All right. Um, let's think. Well, that's a shame. Let's see, is there anything else that's coming on? Yeah, that's it can actually. So I can just uh let me just come into this. And uh oh wow. Let me see if I can just spin. You don't have no ghost type. What's your uh what's your gambit? Air balloon? Uh I think it's air balloon, uh yeah, yeah, air balloon and terra flying. I already terra though randomly on something. Oh I can tear on gadget fire. Yeah, doesn't this invite in my gadget fire unless he doubles just okay, he doubled. Now, uh, what does he have? But uh, well, he doesn't really get anything out of that, right? He might kill my Great Tusk. Um, let's think. Iron Boulder. Earthquake. How much did that do? Earthquake's going to cook me, right? Yeah. I'm trying to find out how much damage that did. Yeah, I could calc it, but I'm not in the, not in the groove. Um... I think I'll just real quick just go Great Tusk here. I don't have a lot of value on him anyway. Okay. Now, let me do slash data. Iron Boulder, let's see. He's pretty tanky. What the hell? This thing just is yeah, strong. Yeah, 10 huh? seconds. Yeah, I do. Let me just come out here and then Will Wisp then. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Well, that's, that's not a bad play because uh, he has nothing to guard against it. Yeah, and I'm just going to hex, and then even if he switches to... Yeah, he does have nothing to guard against it. Like, literally nothing. I'm just going to hex. Now, maybe that was a mistake. What the fuck? Does he get Swords Dance or a Priority Rock move? No. Oh, he's tripping then, huh? Mm-hmm. He's going to sack this then. Okay. 
Yeah, dryer pulls takes a lot of value. Assess that well in the beginning, especially when yeah. T-tar left. But the point of these is not for me to teach you on the first time, as you know. It's just to observe what right. you already know. Now here, um, this can come might be a huge threat. I know that. Also, I don't love how my team is into it. Um, but he is just, I am just looking at him, though. I don't have my focus sash. I could just Draco Meteor. I don't see why I wouldn't. Yeah, you're um, Terran. Right, okay, so, so he's going to take a million percent. Okay. Now, it doesn't, I don't think Hex, I don't need the calc to know that Hex is not going to kill this, right? Right. It would do the same as Draco Meteor. Okay, so that's so not. So he does 47. He's max special defense. Okay. Um, he probably has EQ as well. I could King Gambit here. Let me just do that because uh, he might not have another move. And let me just uh, Swords Dance and see what's going on. I'm a scout here for his moves. Yeah, Swords Dance is right? in the game right now, depending on. Yeah. Uh, and do I SD again or do I just start Kowtow Cleaving? What do you think? Well, uh, you just. Mm, I can't tell you. You can't tell me. Yeah, I can't tell you. Right, so I got to think. Oh, oh that's a body, pre body press exists, right? Yeah. I'm going to just. I'm going to just believe that I live one, so I'm a Kowtow Cleave. Oh, okay, so that's what oh they do. Yeah, Yeah, that was wrong. Okay. Yeah, Iron Defense, now he's going to do the... Okay. It is what it is. Now, I have a Slow King, so it don't matter, I think. All right. Now I got Rocks. Does that fuck me? Let's see. Oh, sorry for language. No, you're good. You're good. Um, do I have any... I can Surf. He doesn't really have much for Surf except for the Raging Bolt. Um... I think Surf. Does Surf make progress against this? Okay. What are you um, let me think. Huh? What are your soul best? Yeah, I think... Uh, oh, if only I had Chili Reception, I could go into Gouging Fire. Shit. Let me just Surf while I get a little time and think about this. Um, okay, so he goes into Raging Bolt. I probably could have doubled well. So, do I need... Uh, I kind of like my King Gambit here. Do I need Gouging Fire? Gouging Fire... Could do well. I don't have much time, let's think. King Gambit, Dragon Ball. Now I'm thinking about... I'm going to go into Iron Valiant here. Mm. Yeah. Because uh, I think I live any one thing, threaten him, and then I get some good momentum. If he calm minds, though, do I have enough cojones to, to push through with whatever fairy move I have. I don't know what kind of special attack Iron Valley has, actually. I have no idea. All right, now we're looking at... Let's look at Iron Valley's special attack. Actually, I don't have enough time. Uh, do I, I don't feel like I need this right now, and I don't want to... I'm just going to go ahead and use the Shadow Ball here, I think. Because I'm not really worried about... Oh, that did nothing. Okay, cool. Now here, um, I could go into... No, no, that's... Dragonfold don't have nothing for that, huh? I could Wisp something again? Do I have my, uh... Five, ten seconds. Let me just... Draco... No, 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 shit. Let's Wisp. Okay, now we Hex. He doesn't have Sucker Punch, right? No. Yeah. Alright, now we're, we're destroying him. Um... I think we just... Kill his whole team. Hold on. Draco Meteor. Again. Uh, this is so... Well, actually, no. Do what you're gonna do. Because <clears throat> this is going to be a really important lesson from uh, the viewer standpoint as well. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, King, do we... okay. um, that's a very strange switch. switch. Yeah, that's a very strange yeah. switch for him. I'm surprised that's what he did. Okay, but you should be in a good position. I don't think he can knock you out. You think I can warning sun here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, again. Yeah. If, oh, yeah, he's not. If damn. That's why I said this shit is busted. If damn. Uh, You'd have to crit me. Even if he crits me. Yeah. If the damn. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, am I faster than. Yeah, yeah, I'm faster than everything. Oh, yeah, he's done. He's cooked. If Zen Headman was over. doing that little, then. Oh, yeah. This shit is ridiculous. And then you can drop his attack, which makes it even better. Oh, that's true. I didn't even, I didn't even consider that. I don't uh, know the optimal ordering, but I don't think it matters, though. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Okay. He got a crit. So. Yeah, matter. he'd have to. Yeah. Okay, so if he crits, it doesn't. His attack doesn't. No, thing that doesn't, doesn't matter. No. But okay, now cool. the That's second one will do probably twenty seven percent. Yeah. So yeah, we have to watch PP and stuff like that. But yeah. yeah. 
Raging Bolt's probably going to be the easiest to kill. Actually, you know what? What I should have done? No, I'm probably pretty bulky. Poison type, he's not holding nothing to, to hit me. He'd have to have a psychic move. It's not really possible. I should have DD'd again. My ordering, I think I should have at least two DDs there. That's crazy that I don't. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I know I'm faster, obviously. Right. I think I'm going to, okay, if I break him up first, if I, I should calc this, actually. I'm actually going to calc it. Do you have time? I don't know. Do I? I don't even see the, the thing saying anything. Yeah, I don't see it either. 60 seconds. What's, what's that? Raging what? How much, how, much, how much time do I have? Uh, just attack him. It doesn't matter whether you win or lose. Yeah. yeah just find out. No, 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 no. It should attack them. Oh, yeah. My fault. But it's just oh, because I get paralyzed too. Yeah. Um, you know, I should have known I should have DD'd actually. But it don't, it, now it's the same. Well, if you DD'd, he would have killed you with. um. What's that thing called? Oh, Thunderclap. Yeah, now, oh, now I, it's a 50. No, actually, it's not a 50. I don't, it's hard to say if he'll knock you out from here. Thunderclap? How much damage did he do with uh, Thunderbolt? Didn't he 47, right. No, he can't kill me unless he crits. Okay. Oh, that's game, then. Because Thunderclap's base 70. And then, uh, now it doesn't really matter what I do. He doesn't have yeah, he anything. Yeah, just... Use that dragon move. I mean, I just break yeah. fight them anyway, yeah. Right. And I'm only saw one time anyway. Right. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So, I want to go ahead and say that part of my awareness was way off in the battle of that game. So, I probably made some dumb plays just for that. So, it probably wasn't necessarily the, the best appraisal. But I tried to narrate to give a little bit of insight. Well, it wasn't just awareness. Because awareness is impossible without knowledge. So, you have a lot of knowledge gaps. Which, right, right. Which is why, so coming back, I didn't want to get, I couldn't, for the first test sort of to see where you're at. I'm trying to see the rawest mm -hmm. form of, of all the flaws and all the things. That way we can dictate what the, the appropriate training would be to start. Um, so th that was perfect. It's supposed to show the, the gaps. Oh. Um, so it seems like you still retain a lot of the, the unconscious competence or habits from back in the day, you immediately went into two questions, you're asking questions, da, da, da. and just as a teaser for the next session for you and for um, the audience, uh, one may be asking, well, critical thinking, how does one do that jam? Like, what is the key to that? And he was doing it already. Um, every, to produce an outcome, right? Critical, uh, getting an answer is an outcome. And so before you can get something, you need to do something. So it's like, well, what does a person need to do to think critically? And there's only one way to do it. And that's by repeatedly asking the right question. Right. And so if you listen throughout this video and particularly that bell, all he did was ask questions over and over and over again. That's how critical thinking works. That's how thinking works. Literally. There's no other way. If you get a random thought, it's not the same thing. Um, I tried to avoid going into the difference between a thought impulse and thinking because I think it would derail too much. But um, thinking is an activity. Activity implies you choosing to do a thing, right? So when you passively sit there and, and you, a coffee pops into your mind, that's, it's not the same as thinking. Um, that's having a thought impulse uh, that just pops up like, like those bubbles on the top of a like when you see volcanoes and they're just like this, these bubbles come up on the top of the lava. Those are our thought impulses. They're just going to come from somewhere. And then... Whereas thinking is like, I'm going to focus on this particular thing and solve it or figure it out. And that's what uh, Julian was doing by asking repeated questions. Um, but we're going to get into that in the next session and really hone in on like, okay, well, what are the right questions to ask? Because there's a system for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, as far as this, uh, the best way to get good at problem solving is to find out what problems exist. And the only way you're going to do that is to just, that's why I was like, it doesn't even really matter what you're doing. You, uh, just go out there and, and, and see what could happen. Okay, well, yeah. oh, shoot, I guess I do die this. Because it, it, it's all win win. Uh, you can't get to the top unless you find out all the ways you can lose. So you now have awareness of the problem so you can start applying the solutions. 
So let's say you did get clapped by Raging Bolt there with the, um, cause he calm minded for some reason. Let's say you did get destroyed. Maybe they don't run dragon moves, but let's say you did get destroyed by um, thunderclap. Then you'd know, okay, actually I do die from that range and blah, 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 blah and yada, yada. And if you didn't now you have an idea of the range, regardless of whether you calc. Now, if you're higher up on the ladder and you're like actually aiming for something, then fair enough. But at this basic level where you're just getting back the knowledge, you're building the knowledge power. It's really just like volume, just volume. See, oh, he had a combine. I'm tripping compared to the Thunderbolt before. Yeah, he could have killed my ass. So then I guess I should have just. Yeah. Wow. OK. You didn't even pay attention to the combine. Right. That's what I was saying. Oh. He combined yeah. it there instead of um, the turn that you attacked him. He combined So I th he didn't thunderclap, I think, because he expected you to morning sun predicting right. him to thunderclap um, right right because he never did thunderclap so yeah uh but yeah that's that's pretty much it for our first go around the next step is going to be uh the training which we're going to do off screen this is uh already 51 minutes but uh, i think <laughs> this is a good uh first video perfect on my end any um what are what insights, takeaways, uh, questions do you have uh, as we wrap this uh, up? Shit, I'm not really going to know until I watch the replay and think about what did this dumbass Iron Nostril do? I would have done this. So I'm looking forward to that part. Mm, which, from a viewer standpoint, uh, that's that comes next. That's an act, the next aspect of the training. Um, there's really four phases, mm -hmm. but the reflection phase is the fourth one. But most people don't. It's not mandatory, it's not required, but if you're gonna become one of the best, it is required. So there's technically four phases, but as far as an actual battle starting and ending, there are three, creation, planning, and execution. Then if you wanna get elite, there's the reflection phase where you go and study your replays. But um, yeah, thanks for watching guys. Hit the like button, leave the questions in the comment section down below if you enjoyed, and I'm um, gonna see you in the next video. Peace.